Greetings, pen pals. I have a pen here today from a fairly unexpected source. This is the Amazon Basics fountain pen. Um, Amazon, uh, I don't, you don't need me to tell you who Amazon is. They do have a product line of their own branded products called Amazon Basics. They sell everything from um, 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 uh, USB chargers to HDMI cables to... Um, um, pet food, I believe, things like that. Just sort of what they call, I guess, basic products uh, and very basic unadorned um, items uh, under the Amazon Basics line. And they just recently introduced a fountain pen, which I am holding right here. And it is pretty basic, but it's actually also pretty nice. So let's go through, let's go through the, um, no pun intended, the basics of it. So it pen is a hefty metal lacquered pen, weighs 32 grams. So it's definitely got some heft to it and it is fairly conventionally sized. Here it is sized up against a Pilot Metropolitan and a Lamy Safari. So everything's pretty conventional here. This is a Chinese made pen. It has China stamped on the top of the clip. And so you're basically dealing with a black lacquered Chinese made metal pen. They get $10 for this pen, which is just about the upper end of what you might expect to pay for a nice, well-made, you know, Chinese pen. Um, um, so let's uh, let's let's uh, talk a little bit about that and walk you, walk you through the different parts, etc. So the clip is nothing sub, uh, uh, fancy, uh, nice springy, conventionally sized clip. It does have the Amazon Basics branding on the clip. That's the only place that the branding appears. The clip goes into uh, right into the finial on the top of the cap, which is sort of just a plain chromed dome finial. Looks very nice, and there's a matching finial on the end of the barrel. It does have a cap band, but the cap band is undecorated. It is a pull to uncap. It does post, post nicely, securely, etc. I certainly like to post my pens. I do use this pen posted. However, I personally think it's a little short unposted, but your mileage may vary, but it works, clearly works either way. The, it's, a, it's basically a thin, Fairly thin pen that tapers in a very conventional style. Again, living up to the Amazon Basics branding. There's nothing flashy at all about this. It's just very nice and functional. It has this step down to a nice long section, but the section is shiny metal without grippage. So if that's a problem for you, you may not like this um, uh, pen. Um, it does have a little tiny lip at the end of the section where it goes into the nib. The nib is a completely unadorned nib. It's available in fine and medium. This is a medium. It just has the M for medium. No other decoration there. It's got a slit. It's got a breather hole and a uninspiring plastic feed. In terms of nib size, it's, it's you know, a, a, an okay size nib, not big, not small. Here it is compared to a Pilot Metropolitan. So it's a tiny bit shorter than that nib, but it is, looks like it's a tiny bit wider at the shoulder. So give or take roughly say the nib on a Pilot Metropolitan. So nothing to complain about uh, with the nib. It's typically size what you might uh, expect for a pen like this. But again, a totally unadorned, unadorned nib. The pen is cartridge converter. Um, it uses standard international cartridges. It came with three standard international cartridges. I'll show you the packaging in a minute. Unfortunately, it did not come with a converter. So I outfitted it with a standard international converter that I happen to have laying around. The fact that it doesn't come with a converter, I think is the main problem with this pen. If any cheap Chinese pen that you buy from a $2 pen, on up uh, will come with a converter. So this is sort of, um, if this pen had come with a converter, I would say it's an A plus from Amazon Basics. You're getting a nicely packaged, and again, I'll show you the packaging in a minute, well-made, hefty pen, works really, uh, uh, writes nicely, as we'll see when we do a writing sample in a minute, um, that's priced okay. I think in the app, with the absence of the converter, that makes it, that pushes it into being slightly overpriced. I think they really should include a converter at this price. But let's talk about the packaging because the packaging is pretty nice. The outer box is your standard um, Amazon packaging, has it in a bunch of languages, refillable fountain pen, medium point black ink, which is exactly what it is. It does say made in China here. And, um, and it has some other branding and about Amazon 
uh, Basics products. You open up the outer box and you get the inner box, which is very nice actually. This is just a nice box that, you know, typically you expect for slightly higher end pens. You open it up, you do get a nice little instruction booklet. Um, you get two Amazon Basics branded cartridges. Uh, embedded in the foam here the pen was here and the third cartridge was actually inside the pen so you do get three short standard internationals to come that come with it um they are branded amazon basics which is actually quite uh, quite nice interesting i'm curious if they're at some point going to come out with a be able to buy a box of amazon basic standard international cartridges i think that will be interesting both for this pen and for other pens and people who like standard international uh use standard international cartridges but again they should have done away with the third cartridge and come with a converter i think that's the my my really only complaint of significance about this pen definitely should come with a, a converter but that being said nice pen nicely packaged um uh, in terms of the actual pen itself i really can't complain you know it's a these sort of glossy um, black lacquer pens are a bit of a fingerprint magnet, but that just comes with the territory. But I think they did a nice job with this pen. Um, looks nice, feels really good, nice weighty. Again, 32 gram pen, nothing to sneeze at. Um, uh, works nice. I, the Amazon Basics branding is is interesting. Um, uh, not what you expect on a fountain pen. Again, this was certainly an unexpected product, but certainly a pleasant surprise. But, 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 but. I know what you're thinking. Pens were meant to write. How does it write? We're going to find that out right now. Okay, folks, what we're writing with here is the Amazon Basics Fountain Pen. And uh, this has a medium steel nib. And this writes pretty well. Pretty nice. Nice flow. It's definitely smooth. It definitely flows well. Um, no complaints from me there at all about the writing. In terms of flex, nah, not really. It's just a stiff, stiff nib, but you know, they don't advertise certainly don't advertise it as a flex nib pen it's just a nice well functioning fountain pen i would say from a wetness perspective it's about average not particularly wet not particularly dry certainly very serviceable um, i'm very pleased with the nib you know sometimes these you know inexpensive pens like this you could sometimes be really disappointed in the nibs etc but nope i think the nib writes quite well um like i said my only complaint about this was the no converter um, for myself and probably anybody watching this video who's likely a fountain pen enthusiast, you're going to have standard international converters lying around all over the place. So it's not a big deal for you. If you're planning on giving this to as a gift with somebody, you either have to order them a converter a la carte, um, give them one of your converters, or maybe they'll just use cartridges um, uh, going forward with the pen. But it just would have been really, really good to include a converter. I think that's really the major shortcoming of this uh, pen. But uh, beyond that grousing about the converter, I really don't have much negative to say about this pen. I think this was a, I was very pleasantly surprised with this. I think the pricing is okay. $10, not good, not great, etc. Um, um, right, it's right where, you know, any more you would really have to think twice about, uh, 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 buying this. If they threw the converter in, then I think that definitely makes it a much better deal at the $10. Um, obviously, as you probably well know, if you're, if you follow fountain pens at all, there are many, many, many nice Chinese pens in t $10 and under. Um, there are certainly many that cost 15 and 20, 20 $25 as well. Um, this is not as nice as a tw some of the $25 Chinese pens, so you're not getting a great deal there. But again, there are some pens that are maybe half the price of this that are just as nice. So um, you just, um, just uh, look at it in that context. But again, I can't complain. It's certainly, there's certainly $10 worth of pen here um, by, uh, by, almost any, uh, by almost any measure. Um, so, I think I've said almost enough about this pen. Let's talk about this ink for a minute now, shall we? 
Okay, this ink is Diamine Honey Burst. This is actually part of a series. So this is meant uh, uh, to uh, evoke the colors and finishes of Gibson, various Gibson Les Paul guitars. Um, so they offer a bunch of different finishes with um, and colors, etc., of the guitars. And so Diamine came out with a series of five inks that uh, mimic them. So the five in the series are the Honey Burst, which you're gonna see today. There's also Cherry Sunburst. There is Desert Burst. There is Tobacco Sunburst. And then the only one that doesn't have the word burst in it in some uh, uh, case is Pelham Blue. So these are the five that Diamine um, uh, has um, created in this series of Gibson Les Paul guitar finishes. We'll, of course, do them all uh, in the course of various episodes, but today we're going to be talking about the Honey Burst. Okay, as we said, this ink is Diamine. Honey Burst. And um, this is very well named. It's definitely a golden honey color. Great color, sort of a unique color, actually. I mean, I really, um, there aren't too many inks that are th quite this color. I mean, this is really just a pretty color. It's yellowy, but not too, not so light that it's unusable. It's actually dark enough to be quite functional and usable, which is unusual for inks of this sort of golden yellowish type uh, family. They tend to sometimes be so light that they're not practical for use. Um, but this is just a great really really pretty color um i'm really looking forward to diving into all the different inks in this series if they're all sort of as nice and interesting and unique as this i think i'm going to be very very uh very very pleased but this is just a this is just a color that i'm really really happy with and i really like um i really like quite a bit um and again i think it's just very very unique and um just um just uh, really stands out and um, definitely a nice break from the reds, the blues, the greens, etc. <laughs> definitely uh, even from the browns. I mean, it really just uh, is a nice change of uh, pace to mix things uh, up a bit. Anyway, that's what this ink looks like on this Rhodia paper. Let's take a quick peek at what it looks like on Tomoe River paper. Okay, so once again, this ink is Diamine. Honey. Burst. And again, not a lot. It's a very, very pretty color. Not a lot in the way of sort of special effects or anything, uh, you know, um, uh, shimmering or, sh or even shading very much, etc. Just a, just a really, really super nice golden honey yellow shade. I mean, it's just, 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 just really, really pretty. Um, um, I'm just really loving this ink. I, this actually, to be honest with you, this might be one of the nicest new colors that I've seen in quite a few months. Um, um, you know, I have a lot of inks. I try a lot of inks uh, out all the time. And um, I rarely have the occasion where an ink just says, wow, that's, that's, that's just really impressing me with its color and its uniqueness, etc. So this is, this is probably the most unique color that I've tried in quite some time. So I'm really, really pleased with this. Um, and um, I'm very, very happy with the, sort of its, um, just, the, just the way it looks and the way it lays itself down, etc. Anyway, I think that might be it for this week. We got a pretty good pen. We got a really nice ink. I think this was a pretty uh, pretty good episode, all in all. Um, as always, please give us some thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, I would like you to consider becoming one. Leave us a comment or two. Those are always welcome. And as always, until we see each other again, have a great day. Bye-bye.